And then as Steve mentioned, he came along and changed our minds. But he was influenced also by Stefansson. And Stefansson, as I showed you, wrote these three books. And then it was Steve who did the first study. And here is his study. And what he showed was that if you adapted people to this high-fat diet, their performance was, wasn't worse. So four weeks of adaptation to the ketogenic diet resulted in no change in endurance performance. And when he, but when you look at the data, and he gave us some of this data today, you'll notice there were two big responders and there were three non-responders. So three people, their performance went down, and two, there was a huge improvement in performance. And so the, the question might be, if he'd had five of those people, he would have drawn one conclusion. If he'd five of those people, he would have drawn the opposite conclusion. So clearly there was an effect, and maybe it wasn't present in everyone. And we were in fact the very first lab to be inspired by Steve to go and do our own studies. And uh, as, he would, as he showed you earlier, this was one of our early studies in which we adapted people to high fat diets and we made them exercise for 150 minutes on the first day of adaptation and on the 10th day of adaptation. And this is their fat oxidation grams per minute. And you can see that within 10 days they'd increased their fat oxidation rate. Nothing fantastic, but just to indicate to you that the body, as he showed, has a huge capacity to increase its fat oxidation. And we then did some experiments, which I'm embarrassed to show you, because what we found was that when we gave people high-fat diets, they performed unbelievably well. <laughs> Look at this. Performance 79 minutes on the high-fat diet and 42 minutes on the high-carbohydrate diet. And we published it and it got accepted for publication, but that, that's bogus. I mean, there's no way you could get this change in performance. I don't believe it. I don't know what we did. But <laughs> I promise you we didn't actively cheat, but there must have been something. We must have influenced the guys that we really thought the high-fat diet was good and important, so they chose to perform better on the day. And then, then, <laughs> then we did another experiment, 20K time trial, and on the high-fat diet, they also went faster. They went significantly faster on a high-fat diet. So here we had a second study showing a benefit. And again, was it true? I don't know. And, 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 but the point I'm making is we now produce two studies which show the high-fat diet actually was beneficial. So on the balance of evidence, the scientists should all have said, gee, we've got to stop eating carbs, we must eat high-fat. But that didn't happen. And so then we did this study, which everyone remembers. Everyone remembers this study. And the sports industry, which promotes carbohydrates, promotes this study, ignores the other two. Because what did we find? We had people do a 100k time trial after they'd been on a six-day high-fat diet. And again, of course, that's far too short to get an adaptation. But it's really difficult to do these experiments. And so what we found was that the endurance performance got worse. It actually took them longer on the high-fat diet than on the high-carbohydrate diet. And it was marginally different, but what really the, the stuff that people loved, the high carbohydrate people loved, was we measured the power output. So we made these people do sprints during the event. And so they did four kilometer sprints, which are down here, and then they did one kilometer sprints up here. So they did one, two, three, four, four kilometer sprints interspersed in the 100 Ks. And there was no difference in performance there, but maybe it was slightly down here. But in the 1K sprints, you'll notice on the high fat diet, their performance dropped off for the, the second, the third, and the fourth sprint. But surprisingly, by the fifth sprint, it came back again, which was interesting. But now this is now given as conclusive evidence that a high fat diet impairs your performance and doesn't allow you to do high performance exercise. But this is called pacing. This is a pacing strategy. And the fact that they come back to the normal there tells you that they could have done it here, but they chose not to. So there's a motivational component to this, which we didn't correct for or didn't understand. But so that's the state of art at the moment, that if you are involved in a 100K time trial, you wouldn't want to put the people on a high fat diet for six days because it would impair performance. If you like this video, please subscribe and share this video on social media and consider donating to my Ko-Fi account.